All right. I am completely hopeless at this technology business. So I'll do my best. I've prepared some thoughts that I've had. Uh, I was absolutely delighted to hear from you about this award. Um, and then when I went to have a look at the list of the other writers who've been on this list before, I'm feel incredibly humbled so thank you very much i definitely appreciate it i'm very rusty when it comes to talking about books because nobody's asked me to talk about anything for a very long time so you'll have to forgive me uh i'll tell you some things i didn't know when i left university i uh, moved to sydney and i got a, a little flat a little granny flat behind someone's house uh, where my rent was exactly equivalent to my pay. So I could either eat or pay my rent, but not both. So it was pretty lean pickings for a while when it came to entertainment. So I started writing this book because it was free <laughs> for starters. Uh, so I wrote it, uh, I started with the very last passage in the book. That was the first paragraph I wrote. And then with each subsequent paragraph, I realized that came before, that came before, that came before. And so I wrote it backwards. <laughs> but uh, it was my first novel and I'd never written a novel before, so I didn't really know how to go about it. So I started at the end, backwards, backwards, backwards to the beginning. And then when I finished, I gave it to my father. And he said to me, sweetie, if you don't try, you'll never fail. And I thought about that for a while and I thought, well, you also won't succeed. So I decided to send it anyway. And I sent it to Alan and Unwin and they said yes. So I didn't know at the time that it was extremely unusual to have your first novel picked up by the first person that you sent it to. So I was very fortunate there. Uh, and I think perhaps if, I'd sent it to a couple of publishers and no one had picked it up. I probably would have quit writing and done maybe community theatre or some other creative endeavour that was also free. But um, as it turns out, they, they picked it up and I was very fortunate again to be edited by Sarah Brennan, uh, who taught me how to write novels. So uh, they said to me, could you put more plot between your jokes? So we worked on that. We probably did... 30 or so edits so by the time we got to the end of the finished manuscript um, I was entirely sick of this book I can tell you so I can that one thing that I definitely learned from writing Finding Grace uh, is that the person whose name is on the cover is really only a very small part of the community of people who bring a book together so Rosalind my publisher gave me um, a structural edit, uh, was very clear about the direction she wanted the book to go, taught me about arcs, character arcs and narrative structure. And then Sarah was absolutely belligerent <laughs> on the copy edit and uh, taught me a whole lot of conventions that I wasn't familiar with before I started this book. So I am extremely grateful to both my publisher and my, and my editor for turning what was a manuscript into a book. And then, of course, for the rest of the team who did the publicity and so forth. Uh, it was then picked up by Agnes Neuenhausen, the late, great Agnes Neuenhausen, who was an absolute giant in Australian literature at the time. And she championed that book. And I now know how fortunate I am that she loved it because she put it in front of the right people. Uh, she talked about it at all of the uh, literature events and so forth that was going on in Australia at the time. So without her championing the book, it certainly wouldn't have got as far as it did. And I'm sure it would have just disappeared into obscurity as, the, as so many first novels do. So I'm definitely grateful uh, for communities like yours that can pick up a, a young um, well not even necessarily young but a new author and um, navigate help them navigate a path towards some sort of commercial viability so uh, after that Grace was shortlisted for so many awards 
always shortlisted, never won anything, but um, I was even shortlisted for an award in, in the Netherlands that I wasn't eligible for, not being a citizen. Uh, but even cover design of the year, audio book of the year, speech pathology book of the year, just was seemed to be um, receive an amazing amount of praise, which I was, of course, completely stunned by. So uh, I was 25. Um, the writers in the movies all live in cottages on a lake or in a forest. Uh, but I was living in the middle of Sydney and I had a day job. And then as I, my writing career progressed, I had three children back to back. And my eldest child didn't sleep through the night till he was four. So I thought... I couldn't write novels. It was too hard to concentrate. I couldn't write novels. So I thought, well, I'll just do a PhD. So I went down to Canberra University, who had the Archive of Children's Literature, and I they wouldn't enrol me because I had a crappy undergraduate degree in a different field. So I started doing a PhD anyway, and I just kept rocking up and presenting seminars, uh, and my research progressed. And eventually they decided that I was indeed doing a PhD and decided to enrol me. And the the product of that study was a book called Alex as well, which I think is probably the best one. And the last one, uh, I think um, I lifted the hood, you call it the hood, I think, bonnet, the bonnet, the front of the car. I lifted it and looked at the engine of how narrative structures operate and I think I lost the magic in doing that. I was not able to write novels after that. So part of that is, I think, why I've stopped writing. But I think the other thing was, which I haven't talked about because nobody's asked me to talk about why I stopped, uh, is that I had given my characters the little injuries and traumas that I experienced along the way. Like, I, I, it's not autobiographical, but part of the tapestry of preparing this, the novels is that I, I handed, handed those little um, painful things that I'd experienced in, and I gave them to the characters. In a way, I sold tickets to my own exorcism, I think you'd say. So I'd have to say that... In this period of time that we're all experiencing with massive amounts of trauma and um, instability, that that's actually quite a useful technique, therapeutic technique. So journaling and creative writing where if you could give a character some of the more difficult, painful experiences that you've had and see how with how much grace they are able to um, navigate those stormy waters... Uh, that's a useful exercise to do. So I think I just ran out of teenage angst to mine <laughs> for commercial gain is what I'm saying. So I think uh, the world is a very different place than it was when you first contacted me about this. And so I'm very sad that I was not able to come and um, celebrate this award with you. But um, I would encourage the writers amongst you to continue that process because I think when you um, create characters and you explore difficult territory, which is what my work has been about, fa troubles, struggles in a family, um, conflict in a family, I think it makes you less finger waggly and more empathetic to the plight of others. And I think there's certainly uh, a shortage of that in the world today. So if that was my message, if the if any of my works had a message, I think it would be um, to all be a little bit kinder and to each other and to ourselves. So thank you again for your for this award, and I do appreciate that organisations like yours do shine a light on books that would otherwise be forgotten, and I and I am very grateful for that. And I'm I would hope that readers who got a little bit of joy out of this book um, would appreciate the works that you're doing as well. Thank you.